My first experience as a software engineer started in August 2021. Then my team offered me to stay with them. So I had a full-time contract after my internship and I worked for this company till March 2022. Then I changed the company. I started almost from zero, from scratch. Um, in June 2022 so it's been and this video I'm filming uh, in April 2023 so it's been almost a year since I work in another position in another company that's in short my uh, software engineering career and in this video I would like to share the struggles I had and I still have on my way and I hope that it will help for those who have just started their career in software engineering or just like me encounter same problems and we can both exchange so don't hesitate to leave the comments if you relate to some thoughts so let's get started <laughs> The first advice I would give myself, it would be don't hesitate to ask questions and ask for help. At the very beginning, I was really afraid to ask my colleagues to help me if I just was stuck and didn't know what to do, or if I had some questions within the code base or just questions in general. I thought that since I was hired to the company as a specialist, I should do everything myself. I was very shy to ask questions because I thought I would seem stupid in the eyes of my colleagues. Only when the time passed and the questions remained unresolved, only in that case I would message my colleagues and say, hey, sorry, could do you mind asking some questions for me or give me like a hand? And actually it's very, you know, bad to think like that, that you know that uh, you bother other people asking questions or if they think that uh, you're stupid. No, you have already been hired to this job position. It means that you have uh, this uh, skills that needed to to perform the work that you should do. And sometimes um, some tasks are more challenging than others. It's not a shame to to ask for help. And sometimes, moreover, asking questions and asking more details about the work you should uh, do. It eliminates risks. It uh, will help you to resolve the, the task better and faster. And the second thing I would tell myself, it's okay not to know something. We are not a machines, we are human beings. And certainly you have some skills, but within your career, you will always encounter some problems that you haven't that you haven't seen before, that you have to, to study some topics, some new technologies that you haven't used before, and it's okay that you haven't done it before. At the same time, I understand I still have this kind of feeling, and I used to have it a lot when I just started, is that you're surrounded by very smart people who have a lot of experience, and it's very hard to, you know, to, to compare yourself to yourself, but before what you learned and how you progressed and not to, to, to always be looking at others and seeing that they are, they have more skills, that they are better at this and that and that. But I will tell you that within the experience, the unknown disappears little by little and you should really concentrate on the progress you had. What helped me actually is that um, I asked my uh, senior colleagues when they conducted interviews with other candidates to just participate as a listener um, and uh, look at the questions they asked the candidate. And the fact that now <laughs> within a year of experience in a company, I can answer all of the questions they ask it makes me feel better. And the other thing is that like to, if you, you know, struggle with this feeling of always being behind others is to, to ask your manager to give your feedback. Um, that wasn't a problem for me because we always have one-to-one -one with the manager. And if, uh, if I do some important, uh, release, some important changes to the project, um, like my manager, my team, they always, you know, praise me. They say, good job. So try to always find this balance and don't uh, be, you know, buried in, uh, in the thoughts of that I'm not good enough because it's, 
it's not the reality. Speaking about like, it's okay not to know everything. Um, I know that my senior colleagues, there are some topics they that they are not comfortable with and I see how they learn. And so it makes me feel, you know, better that, oh, okay, even like people with 10 years of experience, there are still some areas, some topics that, that you, they don't know and they have, they need some time to, to discover the stuff. Which makes me think about the fact that uh, within your software engineering career, you will always learn something. And that really excites me. The, this, this is the thing that is really exciting for me, but probably not for everyone. <laughs> That's why not everyone pursue the software engineering career, um, is that you will always learn something new. And, um, you know, I am ready to always be a student. And I encourage you as well to have this mindset of an eternal student uh, throughout all of your career. And learning a small amount every day is a key to achieving significant learning goals and stay sharp for a lifetime. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks and more, with new lessons added monthly. Brilliant's approach to learning is both effective and engaging. With their visual and hands-on approach, building a daily learning habit becomes easy. This means that you can create programs with drag-and-drop coding, interact with charts and graphs, and explore a wide range of stunning visualizations. What I personally enjoyed while using Brilliant is the visualizations of algorithms. This is one of the lessons in learning algorithms. Here you can see the pseudocode of the insertion cert algorithm, and you can visualize visualize and really touch every step of the algorithm, which actually makes it easier to learn how the algorithm works. I wish I learned the insertion cert algorithm that way. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer free a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash coding girl, or just simply click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get a 20% off the Brilliant's annual premium subscription. The, the third thing I would tell myself and is don't be afraid to make mistakes. I remember the first time when my hands were trembling when I was trying to create my first pull request to click on this create pull request button. To, to give you a little bit of context in the software engineering workflow, normally you have a repository on the GitHub, GitLab or whatever the place. And and each task necessarily goes through the review stage. So other developers should review your code and they either accept the changes or they make some comments and then you have to resolve this their, their comments and push again. When I was doing my first tasks, I was really afraid that my colleagues would say, uh, she's a fool. She doesn't understand this, this thing. I remember the, my first sort of uh, mistake was then I, mm, when I was debugging the code uh, locally, I put to the test, you know, in, in JavaScript, TypeScript testing frameworks, um, you put the IT to test, uh, to each uh, test for execution. And you can put F so that not all of the tests will execute, but only the one that you're working on. And I forgot, you know, to, I committed these changes and how I was, you know, it was a shame for me when colleagues saw that, that I committed these changes and uh, requested the review and they saw that I was like, you know, oh my God. But then I saw that other new members, even though they're there might be senior developers, they do say mistakes at the beginning uh, when they uh, started working on the new project. So I thought like, why was I, you know, uh, bothering so much about that? I don't know. So that's where the lessons I learned, I think. And right now, looking back at myself uh, one year ago, two years ago, I'm just smiling at younger Anna, who was always afraid to ask questions, who was afraid that she doesn't know everything and she was afraid to make mistakes. But I still have open questions and problems on my way because it's impossible to have 
everything figured out. I'm still afraid of making mistakes, especially when I make a release of uh, big changes that I introduced. I'm afraid that there will be bugs in production because of me. And I don't think that it will ever disappear. Probably it will disappear <laughs> with some experience. I'm still not really confident of myself. Sometimes I encounter this imposter syndrome, especially when something goes a little bit wrong or not that I expected. For example, I expected that I would finish this task like within two or three days and then I ended up doing that for a week. Nobody tells me that, Anna, you're too slow, but inner myself is criticizing myself. And I don't know how to stop criticizing myself. Probably it's a good thing, but I shouldn't overthink that so it doesn't bring negative feelings, but only positive emotions and only the way that I am progressing. You know, the, the fact that I'm pushing myself to do more, it only gives me positive thing, but sometimes it doesn't. It does, but I always have negative feelings with at the same time. I uh, hope you understand this thought. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes I push too hard on myself and work too much, uh, especially when actually each task teaches me something. And I can't just simply stop myself at the end of the day, like, you know, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. or whatever, just stop and say, Anna, your working day is over, you should relax. It's very hard. It's very hard because I want to progress faster. I want to be the better version of myself. And I sometimes it's it's hard to stop and just make a pause. And I see that many times it's necessary because I've within the last two years, especially especially between the last year, because I had some, you know, breaking changes in my life and at work as well. And so I got sick a lot of times and this is my body which prevents me to from the burnout. This is how I, I feel it. Every time I push too hard, immediately get sick and I'm obliged to take uh, to take a break and you know to take some days off to, to recover. Another thing that I noticed is that when I just have a break, a real break that I don't think about the task I'm working on, I come back with new fresh ideas and I resolve it faster as if like there wasn't even a problem and after that I'm just thinking wow like that was that easy and and you didn't see the solution so that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope that you relate to some of these thoughts and if you ever feel this way, you're not alone, at least. Um, let me know in the comment if you want me to dive deep into the topics I uh, raised in this video. This was a sort of, a, especially the, the last part of it, a, a lot of improvisation um, that I just wanted to, 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 to share with you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Watch my other videos on career change, life of a software engineer and more. And hope to see you in my next videos. Bye. Bisous.